So if you want to know how to enter into the conversation of social media, start by thinking like a digital native. Think like a young person. That's rule number one. And rule number two is everything happens immediately and everything happens now. Those are the first two big rules of entering into this conversation. The third one for me is simply this. It's recognizing that we don't control our conversations. It's recognizing that you kind of have to give up control that we used to be used to. As adults, as brands, as people running charities, as government, we've always accepted that we were in control of the things that we do. And fundamentally, social media is media that we don't control. Young people have spent their whole lives breaking laws. I'm going to give you an example. What do you think is the biggest youth brand on the planet? The most important one. Disney, someone said? I would completely agree with you. And Disney probably has the most zealous, aggressive group of lawyers protecting their copyrights, their images, and their trademarks of any company out there. And yet, and if you ever see any movie, it always says, you know, not for distribution. These characters can't be used without official word from Disney. You can't do anything with them. And yet, our kids have been breaking this law for forever. They've been drawing pictures of Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and putting them up on your fridge. Because they don't know that. They don't care about that. They don't mind having to actually, uh, they, don't, they don't think you should control it. They think they should. And so we've now found that as young people have gotten older and have had more access to digital culture, that's completely changing. Anyone see a sketch on Saturday Night Live in 2005 called It's Chris Parnell and Andy Samberg rapping about seeing the Chronicles of Narnia. It's a lot funnier than I'm making it sound. Okay, this sketch appeared on SNL in 2005, late in the year. Five million people watched it, which is pretty cool, I think, five million people. One of them, in his using a six-month-old website called YouTube, was able to upload a copy of it, and six million people watched it. I want to just be clear. NBC, a 90-year-old company on a 35-year-old TV show, was able to get their content out to five million people. Some kid in a basement with a six-month-old website was able to get it out to six million people. What do you think NBC did? Lawsuit, lawsuit, of course a lawsuit. They sent YouTube a cease and desist letter. If you are a network, you don't want people seeing your show. That's the worst thing in the world, right? <laughs> so what happened? They pulled it down. And then what happened? Five other copies appeared right there. NBC realized that they couldn't possibly stop this from happening. So the next year, they had another sketch. This one, and I'm going to use a bad word, and I apologize, called Dick in a Box. Anybody see Dick in a Box? How many of you saw it on TV? Hands up. How many of you saw it online? That's exactly right. NBC realized that social media is media that they don't control, so they sent a pristine, uncensored digital copy to YouTube, and 65 million people watched it. Probably 10 to 15 times more than had ever seen it on TV. Because they recognize that they're not in control of this media. None of us are. And that leads me to refer to social media, to all of y'all, as that other kind of media that we don't control, a conversation. So when thinking about how to enter the world of social media, think of it like a conversation. And remember that it obeys all the other rules that a conversation obeys. Rule number one of a conversation is simply this. Know the basic rules of the conversation. You do that when you're talking to a person. You need to do that in social media, meaning you have to actually understand how these things function. So hands up again if you have a LinkedIn profile. Hands up again if you have a Facebook page and Twitter. Here's the thing, is that the big growth social network right now and the one to pay the most attention to in a lot of ways is Twitter. You don't have to get on Twitter. You don't have to get a Twitter page. You do have to go to Wikipedia and read about these things so you really understand them and then make that decision. Truthfully, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter are unbelievably important to anyone running a business right now. You have to have knowledge of them. And to be dead honest with you, it doesn't matter even if you're not because Google and Bing and other search engines now actually search through Twitter feeds for results. So I actually had a slide up. It was pretty, I promise. I would have done a search, and I thought, okay, who do you guys really want to find out about? So I did a search for 
Justin Bieber, and you would have noticed, and you'll see, you can do this yourself, that when you get a page of results, it's not exclusively his official site or his music page or even his Facebook page. There is a dynamic updating window of Twitter responses that happens on Google now, where other people's tweets are being indexed by that search engine. I like to say that we're not in control of that media. When you go to a search engine, you don't even get just official responses. You get people's tweets. Whether you want to be a part of Twitter or not, it is happening. So the first rule is learn very much how those three things operate. Learn the basics of that conversation. Rule number two is in any conversation, you have to know what you want to say. So I say this as a social media guy. Twitter is not a social media strategy. It's not a marketing strategy. Neither is Facebook, neither is LinkedIn. You need to develop an overall communication strategy and make your social media a part of it.